Welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at how we can actually create a Swift file from JSON data so we can actually use this so we can work with inside our data project or in fact any actual project we want to work with. Uh, so I'm in my data project I'm working with my students right now and so let's pull up those two JSON files we originally started off with. And so originally we had our energy.json file which is that big huge mega file which had all that really deeply nested JSON data. And then we went through the process last time of how we could actually simplify that JSON data. And so our simplified JSON data ends up looking like this. And so it's much simpler. You can see we took out lots of data and we flattened it down using that convert to CSV deleting columns. And we also renamed all of our um, types right here. So it's a lot easier for us to work with in programming land because in Swift land, we don't like spaces. I know Swift and Java don't like in spaces. I know it's weird, but this way you can easily work with this. And we also uh, made it so it's very easy to read which each data type is, what's stored inside it. So it makes it very easy to work with and handle. So now I'm going to take this energy simplified JSON. We're going to create a struct to go along with that. And so I'm going to show you the easy way to actually make that happen. So I'm going to go over here in my model group on my project and make a new file. I'm just going to call this energy because that's what our energy stats. That's what we're doing. So make a new file and we'll call it energy stats because that reflects what it is. It's a Swift file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the struct itself with the same name as a class because we always hold that good naming convention so that the name of the thing reflects what it is. Okay, so we'll just make a struct and we'll call it energy stats matching the name of the file because it makes it so much easier to figure out what we're doing when we have the same names as everything. Okay, my struct energy stats, it's empty, it's good, wonderful stuff. I'm just gonna paste that text right there from that first JSON object we had. And as you can see right here, I have all the pieces that we have for that, it's, it's all wrong, but that's okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at each of these types and we're gonna replace the type right here with what's inside it. So Alaska is a string. So I'll take that right there and do string. And then 1960, that's an int. And I just replace the type of the value in the comma with the data type that's stored inside there. So we'll just go ahead and do that for all of those. And that's an int again. And in fact, all of these have to be ints this time, but that's okay. So all these have to be ints, so I just replace all of that comma value with int. If you have a more complex one that has different data types like uh, double, bool, etc., of course you'd replace those values with that as well. But since this one's really simple, this is the way it ended up being, I just replace all of those with int. I already have the column that I need for my data type uh, declaration inside Swift, so it makes it really easy. So I'm just going through and just grabbing all those values and assigning the type to it, making sure it's really easy to read. And boom, and I'm just using that existing structure. That way, this way I know I have all of them in the right order too because I get that member-wise init automatically because I'm working with Swift. Take advantage of that lovely syntactic sugar that it gives us to like, oh, I've got this great structure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to replace this with a var, so var space. I'm just gonna grab that that I just wrote and go right here and paste, and paste, and paste again all the way down. And this gives me everything I need automatically. And I make them vars because, I mean, it's honestly, it's just easy. In case I need to change anything, I can. I can grab that or update it inside my project because I don't know for sure that they are going to be single-use variables. So since I don't know, by default, I make them changeable. And if I need to also, it makes it easier for handling the codable status we'll be adding with this in a minute. Okay, now I've got the var on that. I've got these extra uh, quotes I need to get rid of, so I'm just gonna go save this really quick. I'm gonna go Command F right here to get rid of all these type annotations. I'm gonna do the drop down menu and replace, and replace the quotes with space. So I'm gonna get rid of all those quotes and replace it with a space, and replace all of them. Boom, done, and save. And now I have a struct that's been created from that simplified JSON data. So this is the really, really fast way to do it. The last thing you have to do is make this codable. So I just add the codable protocol to this. So colon codable and save one more time. We've created a, a <clears throat> we've created a struct for that JSON data that we simplified earlier. And now I can easily use the data from that inside my project and report with it. And so all I had to do was go through and do the work of first identifying the things I needed to get out of the data, get the information I need from it, rename the values of that, cut out the fields that I don't need and then resave that in JSON format so I have that available. And now I can bring that in, I can use this inside my project. Take a look at the other data videos on how to work with data using Swift and also how to work with data using uh, Java as well. You can do some really cool stuff. Real data makes projects even better and makes them more fun and more real. And so I hope this is a helpful way you can learn how to do that. Have a great day, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, cheers.